I talk about being on code a lot, like an incessant amount. I'm about to give you a lesson in being on code. And everybody's in on it. Everybody from that, from the school mom to the people voting, uh, to the media, all this stuff, because we are at a time where there are some folks, mostly white folks, that feel threatened in this country. This is less about the Virginia election and who actually gets to be called parents and parent voices. We are gonna talk about the recent win in Virginia that is being dubbed the win for school parents. I am somebody that truly, truly believes in the voice of parents. Built a whole organization around listening to the end users of education. But there's something that we just have to deconstruct just a little bit. In this election, there was a lot of, I would say, coded language. Some might say dog whistles. CRT, or better yet, critical race theory, which we have already talked about, was called the linchpin for parent voices. But let's just get some facts out there. One is that critical race theory is not something that is taught in K-12 education is actually something that is from law school. Uh, I didn't learn about CRT myself until I was deep in graduate school, getting my doctorate in education. But the dog whistle, the on code portion, even though you keep defining what this is for people, is basically anything that is making white people feel bad from a historical point of view. Not what CRT actually is, which is saying that the way that laws were built it was built under a cloud of racism that we all ingest every single day. There are these people that are just been on code around this and they use a CRT and they talk about it so much that there are even people on the left or Democrats or whomever, folks where it's not actually in their best interests are parenting the wrong definition of what CRT is. The bigger problem is, is that there's a certain group of people that we respect as parents in this country. And they tend to be white parents. They tend to say terms like the parent voice or the suburban voice, or there's a bunch of different dog whistles that are meant to indicate basically the stronghold of this country, which is white people. And I just think it's interesting because I know a lot of people, black people and brown people that are also in parent groups and that also lift their voices, that have been lifting their voices at school board meetings for decades. Uh, it just doesn't get covered the same. And it's interesting because when these white parents spoke up, and I think that they should have, I might not agree with anything that they said, but I do believe in First Amendment rights. I do believe in freedom of speech. People are going to feel how they want to feel about stuff, and you get to talk about it. You get to say it. I might have some thoughts. I might have some opinions, but then discourse happens. Dialogue happens. Uh, disagreements happen. But here's the issue that I'm having. Every time those black and brown people speak, they don't get called parent voices. You know what the media says or asks? Who's paying them? Where did their money come from? Who told them to say that? And let me tell you why this is more egregious. George Bush has said in the past, he, he uses the term, the, the soft bigotry of racism, the soft bigotry of low expectations, but we just gonna repurpose that to the soft bigotry of racism. Because even in that statement, even going straight there, there's a code there too. And there's a dog whistle in that. And what the dog whistle was saying, you black moms and you brown moms are not smart enough to come up with these thoughts and ideas and wants on your own. So somebody must be paying you. When it's white moms in Virginia that say they don't want CRT in or around their classrooms, in or around their kids, this is a referendum on education. We applaud. They get stories in the right wing media and in the left wing media about the importance of parent voices. There's a great organization in Oakland, my hometown, the Oakland Reach, and these people built a hub. While COVID was happening, these people built an interactive hub and they demanded that quality not drop in Oakland during COVID. While you adults figure it out, don't let quality drop. And they took it upon themselves. These, these moms and dads, black and brown coalition of parents built a virtual hub that helped kids stay up to date and not lose a whole bunch of stuff they learned. Instead of loving on them and giving them all kind of love and man, this is innovative. Somebody said, well, who's paying? Them? And then this is Sarah Carpenter. 
put Sarah Carpenter on the screen for me. Just have her hover right here. I call Sarah Carpenter my Fannie Lou Hamer. But I'm going to stop saying that because I didn't have, I wasn't blessed enough to be able to know and spend time with Fannie Lou Hamer. I just know of her spirit. But I know Sarah Carpenter. She's out of Memphis and runs this organization with an amazing group of parents called the Memphis Lift. And if you know Miss Sarah Carpenter, you know that she says whatever the hell is on her mind. Miss Carpenter, very much like me, does not care what type of school your kids go to. Because this is the thing when you get wrapped up and what they call education reform. They think that you only like this one type of school and you only want this. No, no, no. When we say parent choice, we mean actual parent choice. However, when black parents and brown parents start to make certain choices that other people don't like, instead of respecting the choices that those parents made for their kids, you say, well, who's paying them? They need to uphold the system which is crazy. They want you to cake for a system that ain't never loved you before as a black or a brown person in this country, but that's a whole nother video. Back to Sarah. She speaks her mind on everything. If you are a school and you are trash, she don't care if you're a traditional school, a private school, or a charter school. She gonna give you that business and probably it'll get you shut down because she's that good. She is somebody that has put her kids in all types of schools and fight for other people to do that. But when her group steps up and they make statements or they talk to Elizabeth Warren and she's not very truthful with them when they ask her a question, by the way, people don't listen to what she says. They don't listen to the wisdom because she don't talk like them. That woman reminds me of my grandmother. I love this woman to death. I would die for this woman. That's how, that's how much like home she feels to me. But when she talks or Lakeisha Young in Oakland talks, or these sisters and brothers in Atlanta talk, or anybody that got a darker hue, whether they black or brown, instead of listening and saying that's parent voices, now those people are shields. And you have to ask yourself, if you got caught saying that those white people were parents and they were parent voices and that's why they won, and then you hear black and brown people doing the same thing for their community, for their interests, for their kids, and the first thing you go to is who's paying them. I would like to say that as a society, we have to do a much better job with the soft bigotry of racism. Here's your agentic moment. If you are a parent of any race, of any creed, of any color, and you happen to be a parent or a community advocate, and there's something that you care about, speak your truth, exercise your right, and expect for people to have differences of opinions and find ways to civilly have these discussions. But if you automatically dismiss somebody that you say you respect because they don't agree with you and they tend to look like me, they tend to <laughs> show up a little different than what you used to. And your first thought is to go to that dark place instead of hearing what they got to say. Well, we all got some work to do. Y'all take care of each other. Be smooth. The better question is, are you okay with failing? Are you okay with losing? If you can answer those things as yes, then I would say run like hell. Start running right now. Stop waiting for folks. 